Ladies and gentlemen, this is a segment of the show we really enjoy because it's uh, one of the things that started a lot of comedians on their way to comedy is Mad Magazine. And right now, my co-host, the legendary Wid, here's his wonderful segment called It's a Mad, Mad, Mad World. Mad, mad. I, I didn't have the other two, Joe. Oh. Don't, don't, don't get mad at me. I, I, I'll try to be a little more specific. Okay. Uh, that's, uh, look, Shakespeare. Um, John, I know that you know that one of our first influences in comedy was Mad Magazine. Now, it was uh, when we were uh, immature and young men, uh, you know, that was something that let us in on the secrets of the world, okay? It showed us how obscene uh, uh, the advertising world was. It showed us how cantankerous and uh, uh, misleading our politicians were. It showed us uh, that humor was to be found in everything and that our parents were not perfect, okay? And it all started with a comic book in 1953. And the comic book uh, was started mad. And at one time, there were very spooky comic books, and they came out, and the parents, back in the 50s, uh, said, we don't want those magazines, we don't want those comics anymore, they're all horror comics. So mad came out of that, okay? And it was a comic book, and it had, uh, it, it, it had the funniest sort of stuff for us young people who were growing up with it. And it not only influenced me as a comedian, it also influenced Monty Python, okay? It influenced people like Robert Crumb, okay? R. Crumb, who makes a thing. It influenced Weird Al. Weird Al talks great about these beautiful, beautiful magazines that were out there. Jerry Seinfeld. I can, even Robert Egbert, okay? Right. From, from the, he, he, Puts that out there. Now, we're going to do a new segment that uh, we're going to through one mad magazine a week, okay, or uh, an episode. We're going to go through the entire thing and talk about how it relates to our culture today and how it related to the culture at the time. My favorites, uh, okay, are the ones like from the hippie era where they would, uh, you know, where they would make fun of the hippies because it was something that was... Uh, here is, uh, here's an example of that with, uh, you know, the American Eagle being passed down, okay, through the ages, okay, and it gets passed to, uh, you know, a World War, uh, a Civil War vet, a World War I vet, a World War II vet, and the World War II vet hands it to the hippie, and the, the, the American Eagle has turned into a rubber chicken, okay, with the hippie right there. Uh, so that's, that was a comment on the, on the uh, Vietnam War? It was probably on the Vietnam War. There's a, uh, 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 the Vietnam War was something that, uh, you, you know, really came out. Here's a, a comment on the uh, Vietnam War, okay, uh, right there. Can you see that map? Okay, that was a comment on the Vietnam War. This is a hawk's eye view of United States, and you can see that attached to where Florida should be is North Vietnam and South Vietnam. Now, that's very interesting that's, that, uh, that you mentioned the, uh, the Vietnam War because through 1973 and 1974, that was the peak time of circulation for our MAD magazine. And it was uh, up to 2 million people. So 2 million uh, copies of Mad Magazine were on the streets uh, anytime during 1973 and 1974. You know, and it is a great history here because some of the most iconic humorists out there, people like Gene Shepard, who was the author, uh, radio host and author of, of Christmas Story, uh, people like Ernie Kovacs, people like Bob and Ray, all wrote for, even up to Weird Al. Weird yeah. Al was just a guest editor out there. And how influential it is, you, you cannot imagine. I mean, there's, there's people who, uh, the, the, uh, on The Simpsons, who just say, oh, yeah. yeah, Mad Magazine was my first inspiration. And 
my favorite quote about Mad Magazine is from a, an artist that I'm not crazy about. Here, from here, uh, well, not here, but from New Jersey, Miss Patty Smith. Horses, horses. But the, Patty the Smith singer? said, With the after hairy. Mad Magazine, after Mad Magazine, drugs were nothing, okay? Which meant that, uh, you know, that's how wild Mad was. And I loved how it, uh, how it, uh, how it branched out into so many, uh, you know, different uh, things. They had what we call paperbacks now. I don't know if people still read them. They have a, a phone. But the paperbacks were all reprinted, okay, from the old days. So you got to, you know, no matter what age you were, you got to catch up on things that used to be. They used to come with sometimes records, okay, a small record, the giveaway, and things like that. But my, uh, my favorite were the... Uh, stickers? Uh, ...were the stickers that they would sometimes give you in the, uh, in the mad things. This one happens to be uh, with Don Martin. Don Martin was one of uh, the, uh, the famous uh, artists that were here. Don Martin, uh, were Al Jaffe, Mort Ducker, okay? And he had the greatest, uh, the greatest sound effects in comics uh, that were ever. Could you read a couple of those uh, oh, sound effects, uh, John? It's because just, you have uh, uh, such a, a great speaking uh, voice. I love when you well, put on those. Uh, there was a, a guy was uh, squirting a water flower, a war, uh, you know the old trick of flower squirts. Yes. Uh, I came from uh, Schlitka, and when it hits the guy, it says sprats it. It says dork. Yeah, bam, uh, glork, you know, glock. You know, and so it was, like, it was sort of made up like whimsical yeah. words and like that, and which became part of the uh, teenage uh, vocabulary for me. When I, when I was a kid. I used to love getting these stickers and putting on my school books. Like your, okay, and yeah, uh, Mad was so cool back then. Well, back then, and I, I know it, it's it changed hands, and it went, and I think the world got a little bit uh, more. Uh, we didn't have to turn to a magazine. Well, a reality was sort of hitting us in the face as uh, things. And, and once the war ended, it became the dull flat seventies. At the dull Denver flat seventies. Yeah. Okay. But and one of the greatest. Okay, uh, we're, we're going to wrap this up. But one of the greatest uh, things about Mad Magazine is that they had a fold-out at the end. You know, can I show you that fold-out? Uh, <laughs> you can see green in it. <laughs> is what? It's, it's oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> but uh, you would get it. Uh, okay, in the back. And uh, it would say something like, uh, what is the one happy, uh, what is the one Unhappiness, almost all modern parents are sure to share with their children, okay? And, and it has here, uh, you know, just a, a normal house with a guy cooking and things like that and kids in the pool and everything looking normal. But then when you fold it over, you get a completely different picture. What is it? And the picture turns out to be a hippie, okay, with love beads on, <laughs> and it says... A hair raising experience, okay, uh, for long haired, long haired weirdos. The, the long haired weirdos, which uh, you know during its peak, uh, peak hours. Well, I got to say something about the uh, cover boy, okay, Mr. Alfred E. Newman. Yes. Okay. Started in 1955 and just went on to bigger and better things. You can see that uh, on the covers that. Uh, he is omnipresent. I think there was only two or three covers that he wasn't. Here he is uh, imitating Barbara Streisand, okay? Here he is on the college issue with uh, that sort of, uh, thing. Uh, you know, almost a, uh, a, a sort of a passive uh, Alfred E. Newman inside a tire swing. But late in 1955, it, that image has been around since the turn of the century. It was a little ad. It was in little ads for, uh, for, it started out in a butcher, as a butcher thing, and he says, what me worry about the, you know, good meat, okay, something like that. And it wasn't until 1955 that Mad Magazine picked that up, and it was on the cover, but it was very tiny, and it said under it, uh, it, it uh, was advertising masks, mm -hmm. and it had like a mask of, you know, mad scientist, and it had another mask, that uh, beautiful lady, and it had his picture there, and it said, idiot, okay? <laughs> you know, and so... I, I, when I was a kid, I used to collect these. Uh, from, I'll say from... Everybody the, collected them. I'll say from 74 to like 84, I had every issue. I used to keep it in a footlocker in my bed. I just oh. loved going over it. I really liked the artistry, but 
I used to get so mad when my brothers or sisters would crease the fold in. Oh, because my that, it, it, yeah, my I magazine mean, had to be in pristine condition. Okay. I remember one time I came home and, and, and he, like you, you don't have to crease it to look at. You can do it a little bit. I was so mad that they did it because I can't go back three years and buy an old old magazine. You're a Virgo. You're a little fastidious. So what I did was I got a, now. I, I got a, 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 a towel or a washcloth and put it on it and ironed it to get the crease out of it. They could not. I didn't want anybody wrecking my man magazines. That is the scariest thing I've ever heard, John. <laughs> okay, that you did that. But I want to just warn you, John. There's something out there. Yes. That all mad uh, magazine fans hate. Oh, the knockoff man. Cracked magazine. magazine. Yes. The worst. Unfunny. Uh, drawn very amateurish. And. Yeah. It definitely ripped off. And, oh, man. And he's right, too. You know, when they would do like a movie parody, you could see the artist for a Cracked mm -hmm. stole the drawings from the Mad Magazine writers. Um, and now, there's also two. Now, we'd point that out. There's, there's Mad uh, Cracked. There's also two two more that were even lower than that called Sick and Crazy. Sick. I remember Sick. And, 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 and they all had their knockoff versions of Alfred E. Newman. Alfred E. Newman. I forget what this guy. Sylvester guy's. P. Yeah, Smith. They all, all had. And another guy another guy had the 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 thumb for sick or crazy was called the Nebish, and I forget <laughs> and the other one had named like Alexander P. Jones. It was just awful, really bad. What? Uh, well, hey, I, uh, we are going to go through uh, uh, an issue of Mad each week, and this is just our little introductory to it. And uh, I want you guys to get out your old Mad magazines, okay, and send it to us, okay, because. Uh, we are big fans, and we'll mention your name on the... Uh, no, you don't have to send us. But, ladies and gentlemen, that has, been our, uh, that has been our introduction to our mad, mad, mad world. Thank you, Wade.